Welcome to Unscripted Coding. Today we're going to talk about the latest feature in Google Gemini API called Grounding with Google Search. Now the short story of this is that uh, Gemini, which is Google's AI model, is now able to, with other tools, offer online connectivity within the API. That means that you can build apps that use this AI model, but also get the freshest data off the internet without building your own tools, connectors, um, data retrieval systems. All of it can be built into the Gemini API. Now, if you're coming as a consumer, yes, you've seen this in ChatGPT. It can access Bing. It can now do more comprehensive searches. You might have used uh, Gemini on your phone, and it can go on Google and find things out. But before this, there were only a handful of models and tools for developers like myself and I guess you watching this video to actually do that on your own. Um, so we're going to go into Google's AI Studio just to show you how this all looks and um, run through what grounding is. But before that, I wanted to talk about some of the alternatives here. Now, the oldest way you can do this is through um, functions. Gemini API calls it function calling, but uh, for the last six to eight months or so, most of the major models allowed you to connect other tools or functions into the API. And so one way you might do this is you get an API key for Google search. You conduct the Google search on the side, throw it into um, Gemini, you can do it low tech, throw it right into the prompt, or uh, through function calling to allow the Gemini to allow Gemini API to connect to the internet when they wanted to. Now, if you haven't seen my video on Claude Lawyer, Claude Attorney, uh, where I created an AI agent, you should watch it. Excellent video, but it also talked about how I built this search tool right into um, right into uh, Claude, similar process with Gemini API, but of course that takes more work. You have to build and maintain that search tool to get the results to put into your, your uh, tool. Now the other uh, obvious solution to this was using perplexity. Now perplexity is one of the uh, AI search engines right now and one way you can access their API, which has online access, is through Open Router. Now, you can go onto their waitlist as well, but um, I have been waiting a very long time to gain access to it, and I still haven't gotten access to it. Um, so, Open Router is a very quick way to search things up. Uh, what is the latest NBA game going on? Clearly, I am not a sports person. That sounded awkward, even as I say out loud. But uh, you can see that this one, they hooked up Llama 3.1 with a 405 billion parameter one, so a very large, capable model. And it realizes today's November 2nd. It provided me a few options, and then here are um, not a great response. I would like a pithy one-liner. Um, but long story short, this is one way you could go about it. Uh, another way you can go about it is Cohere. And what I find very interesting is that their web search uses the same language as Google Gemini, which is grounding. And what I find more uh, exciting here is that Cohere's grounding could potentially be web search, but it could also um, be files that you put into the system. So I wonder if Gemini in the future will ground your answers to a web search, but also to documents that you feed it. For example, internal business documents. And so uh, just to keep it consistent, I'm going to search right here. Now, I'm going to also throw out another option here, which is search GPT. Uh, this has been 
announced now uh, and very recently. It's been made available very broadly. Uh, it has not been turned on consistently on my account. It just turns on and off, so I sometimes have access to it. I sometimes don't. But it has been amazing. Uh, it is not just a simple Bing or Google search. It is searching multiple repositories. Um, so it must be something proprietary to OpenAI, whereas I feel like Perplexity does a basic uh, Google search. I think the old ChatGPT used to do a simple Bing search. Of course, Google and Bing does their own search only. Uh, Cohere does something interesting. And right here, you can see scheduled for November 1st. Uh, that is today, actually. So now that I think about it, today is not November 2nd. Um, uh, open router got it wrong. But here we got the right time. And this is a much better response. Uh, how did it search? I'm not sure. But let us try Google AI Studio and see if we get a nice pithy response. I like the response from Cohere. So to get all this started, you're going to go into the playground. You're going to turn on grounding. You're going to accept this uh, this uh, disclaimer here. Uh, it gives you a couple options. One of the ones that we might want to look at in the future is you can keep the results for up to 30 days. Um, and also you have uh, the general disclaimer that you don't own the results, you uh, probably don't want to rely on it perfectly, but we'll just acknowledge it. And we're going to do a Google search. Now you do have an option here. This uh, is described in their introduction here, but it is a dynamic retrieval. So that means that um, Gemini will ultimately make the decision, should it go online to check or not? And here is a threshold for it to decide whether to go online to search it or not. So if I say, hello, how's it going? It's not going to go online and search, you know, how am I doing? But if I go and tell it, specifically, please go Google search something, uh, presumably it will have a very high score and go and search Google. So I'm going to leave it default. And again, the grounding menu here suggests that in the future, there will be more than one source available. And we'll just click Save and we'll see what is the latest NBA going uh, NBA game going on right now. So November 1st, it's got the right time, uh, right date. Uh, Denver Nuggets versus the Minnesota Timberwolves. Was that the same result here? Uh, San Antonio and Utah Jazz. So no, it is not the same result. 6.30 ET, that seems about right. Let's check it out. Um, okay, so there are multiple games going on. Uh, Nuggets versus Timberwolves, that is correct. And it is the closest one based on my time. So Gemini, I'm just giving it the benefit of the doubt here. Uh, here we have Antonio Spurs and Utah Jazz. Is that correct? Am I missing something here? Okay, so maybe not so reliable. Uh, this doesn't surprise me. Um, I am going to search one more thing here and just say, what are the consequences for manslaughter in British Columbia, Canada? What sort of sentences can I expect? And the reason I'm giving this out is because um, when I've done this similar question uh, on search GPT recently, it has done a really good job of finding resources from legal specific uh, resources that I would go search. I would want to search 
Google Scholar, Justitia. Um, there were a few other sources that was surprising because they were more academic in nature. Uh, here, criminallawyervancouver.com, Toronto Criminal Lawyer. These are results I would expect from a Google search. So um, I do think that Google Gemini is doing a basic Google search. They're not advertising anything different. But if you are doing online research, um, just a side tip search GPT has been pretty good at that. Not perfect, not amazing by any means, but it does do deeper than check out the first 10 results of Bing or Google search. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this. It certainly looks better than uh, Co Cohere, which has consistently been middling for me. Um, I, I don't think this perplexity API model gave me a useful answer at all uh, in this previous one, but at times you get lucky. Um, but what I want to talk about in the last, say, couple minutes of this video is just how this works. I was really excited to see this until I started reading deeper and I realized that they really aren't doing anything different than what I did previously in my video for um, the AI lawyer agent. Um, how grounding works is that they have created a tool called Google Search Retrieval. Um, I think my tool was called Google Search. So you know um same thing it created a tool uh the tool for me needed an api to connect to the internet um to connect to a google search but i think essentially they are doing the exact same thing they have just pre-packaged a tool for you so you don't need to um function call it yourself and design the function yourself it is just a baked in tool now and so the google search is is probably going to give you the top 10 results give you a uh excerpt from each of the 10 results and it's going to throw it into the response so that um the next the response that uh, that Gemini provides will be able to read and consider all of the things that are thrown into the in, into what the messages are. So in many ways I'm a bit disappointed. In some ways you know it's still great in that they have provided this very easily to people who don't want to build it themselves. Uh, this will certainly make it easier. I won't have to maintain anything. Um, but I could have gotten very similar results six months ago. And so anyone at the frontier is not really looking at this going, yes, this unlocks new uh, features for me. It's just a little easier to build. Um, that's, that's really all I wanted to say. And um, the thing about this is that, in general, I really like using Gemini API, so I can see myself using this a lot. But the homegrown, home-built Google search tool, I can unplug Gemini and use GPT-4.0. I can use O1 Mini. I can use Claude 3.5. And so the homegrown tool is going to be able to carry through basically any of the other models and if i don't like gemini 1.5 so much anymore i can migrate to 3.5 um and the last thing the last thing i swear uh, i'll close this up soon is you want to consider what you're actually doing because google searches are really great for questions like what's the next hockey game what's the next football what's the next soccer game it's really good for general information um uh, the idea of grounding is that it's going to confirm information as well so lots of these little things that's good at but be warned google search is traditionally pretty terrible for academic research deep dives things like that especially when these kind of approaches is going to be maybe the top 10 results. If I'm being generous and assume they're doing 20 or 30 results, it's not going to be amazing. And so you want to 
pick the tool accordingly because uh, Cohere, uh, I, I think, also does a basic search. Um, perplexity, I have never really figured out what this API is searching. It seems to be uh, a bit odd at times. Um, but then the ready-made tools, if you go to perplexity.com instead of using their API, you can see they are searching uh, multiple times with different phrasing. If you go with search GPT and chat GPT, I don't know what they're doing, but it's very clear that they must have different types of search tools and they are engaging the appropriate one. So it's very well done. And I'm hoping that over time, this grounding is going to have a couple different sources. One that's Google search, one, you know, competitors, Bing um, and Yahoo search or whatever, but also a couple academic sources, a couple newspapers, a couple of, uh, I don't know, image sources, and maybe even a local grounding source of my own documents, business uh, contracts, things like that. So um, I hope you guys have found this short dive into the grounding feature helpful. Um, I think this is going to be pretty key. This it, Everyone is starting to converge into this feature because it's really important to combat hallucinations, but also to expand the number of ways you can use AI. Uh, they're just going to get better and better. So we'll sit tight and see how things will go. So thanks for watching, and I will see you again soon in our next video. Bye.